broadcast here. All right. This is fantastic. And hello, everyone. We are going live. And you may be expecting to be seeing Andrew Horn sitting with me right now. <laughs> but um, that's not what's going to happen. You know what the crazy thing is about life is that life happens and we just roll with it, right? And so that's kind of what's going on here. And I'm excited. It's kind of perfect I in agree. a way yes. that that's what happens. Because guess what? I am talking to Mickey Agrawal right now. And Mickey, you are absolutely thrilling and stunning in person. But you have, I have to say, um, I saw you years ago give a presentation on your first book, uh, Do Cool Shit. And it, so was, crazy too. It, it was amazing. And I was inspired at the time. You've come out with a new book, Disrupt Her, Disruptor, Disrupt Her, mm -hmm. and it's a manifesto. And so I love that we're here together, that I have the chance to talk with you and ask you a little bit about, about Disrupt Her, about your views on creativity and social, being a social entrepreneur and um, basically the way that you live a purposeful life. Mm. That's Great. a lot. I'm happy to be here. That's a lot, that. right? <laughs> okay, so let's get started. Yes. Um, do cool shit to disrupt her. Walk me through the evolution, like from there to here. Yeah. Um, so, so my um, career began as in finance and investment banking. And um, I moved to New York City in 2001, mm -hmm. when um, right before 9-11. And my subway stop every single morning was to World Trade Center. Wow. And I would basically go to, you know, get off the train at to World Trade Center, walk upstairs, get tea with my girlfriend at the cafe at the World Trade Center, and then walk across the street to my office, which was directly across the street from to World Trade. And 9-11 um, happened. Mm -hmm. 700 people in my girlfriend's office died on that day. Oh. Um, two people in my office died on that day. And everyone was just walking to work, going to work, taking the train, just like not like like any day. And many of them didn't come home. And um, that was the first and only day in my life that I slept through my alarm clock. Oh wow! And um, I share some of that story, do cool shit, yeah. and and also a little bit disrupt her. But it was really my wake up call. It was my aha moment. It was mm -hmm. the moment that really helped me see that the mystery of life is that you never know when it's going to end, Yeah. right? We can all get hit by a meteor and die in an instant, and that would be yeah. it. And so the question became so clear for me. It's like, you know, like, what is my purpose in life? What do I want to do? What, what, what you know, um, shines a light in my eyes? Mm -hmm. You did this. Um, so she illustrates this beautifully um, mm -hmm. in the book. And I, I made a note to myself because... I called it give ourselves a death deadline or a life line. And it's a life deadline because yes. you actually say, you know, you there are only about 21,000 days. days to live from the point when we graduate college, usually around 22 years old, to the point when we die around the age of 80. And so what I love this, what I love about this is that you actually, when you put some practical parameters around like let's talk about it like if you've got about this much time to live that's what right. are you doing with that's it? it that's it and what so are you doing with that's it? exactly yeah. it. so for me i was like all right i wrote down three things i want to do with my life right after 9 11. the first was to play soccer professionally mm -hmm. the second was to make movies and the third was to start a business yeah and i did all three i made the new york magic soccer team i worked in the film business for a number for a couple of years and then um, had my first aha moment for my first business, which was born with a stomach ache. Wow. And all of my businesses, the, the goal, and, and we'll, we'll, go, we'll go through them very quickly, but the goal of all the businesses was, was always to elevate humanity, mm -hmm. was to always lift up you know, our, our, our people in the world and support the planet mm -hmm. at the same time. So the first business was born out of a stomach ache. I was eating out a lot and um, um, kept having a lot of stomach aches and you ate a lot of kind of crappy food while you're out in, in and about. And um, one day I came home with a horrible stomach ache and I was like, enough is enough. And I went to research and discovered the massive processed food industry, the hormones, oh, yeah. antibiotics, the pesticides, the preservatives that were in the food today. 
and I really did a deep dive in, um, you know, looking at categories like pizza yeah. that hadn't really been disrupted in a really long time and was made with bleach flour, processed cheese, sugar-filled sauces, processed toppings. It was really bad for you. And yet it was, if done right, if made, if made with the right ingredients, it actually would be a brain food. It's called people crave pizza because it actually has all the food groups in it, but it's done right. Yes. And so the question became, oh my God, like I want to create the the world's best alternative pizza concept. Right. And so without any experience in 2005, I was 25 years old, opened New York City's first farm to table, local, organic, like gluten-free pizza concept. Mm -hmm. And none of these buzzwords existed at the time. And <laughs> I know. Well, I was thinking about that because going through um, the history, even, okay, can I just say, and this is just a little of a sideways jaunt yeah. here, but seriously, everybody has curse words in their books now. <laughs> and back when you did that, it was like not the thing. Now right. it's like a trendy thing. And I'm, just, <laughs> I'm like, how often are you at the front end of some stuff that's happening like that? It's kind of like, hey. Yeah, I mean, and, and it comes with a lot of pushback too, yeah. right? Yeah. It's just like, do cool, shh. And you're like, just say it. Just you know, say it. Just say yeah. shit, it's fine, yeah. we all heard it. It's so funny. Yeah, I mean, they, yeah, it, it's true. And I think it, it um, um, I think you have to have a really strong community around you who really mm -hmm. love and support you, mm -hmm. who, who can then, like if people talk shit about you or, or push back against your kind of forward thinking ideas, you'll always have a really strong tribe to fall back on. Right. And I think for me, like starting any one of my business, I never would have been able to really push through had I not had a really solid foundation of friendship around me. Have you always had yes. a solid friendship? Well, I have an identical twin friend. sister. That's, so I mean, always, we, so you know. I had the opportunity to interview Radha. She was, oh my gosh, I mean, she is amazing. Um, and I'm just like, okay, good genes, good like family, but <laughs> something went really right there, you know? Well, I think it starts with having a buddy that's always like, yeah, yeah, I love that idea. Go oh, do yeah, it. Yeah, oh my yeah. God, early morning dance party. Yes, go do it. You know, know like, it's I like know. kind of like you, you really egg each other on in a really positive way and you support. So you always had someone to laugh at your jokes. And, and so I, I think I was like born in community, mm -hmm. you know? And so um, I think as a result, all of the ideas that came from that um, came came, you know, in my career of entrepreneurship, mm -hmm. you know, really had a foundation of, of, of solid friendship. And so after, so, so with the restaurants, then after them, I, I um, brought in a partner to run the restaurants. And so I freed up my time to work on my next business, which is the period proof underwear company. Yes. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. thanks yes. And um, also a zany idea. People were like, no one's going to ever wear like underwear that you bleed into. Sounds mm -hmm. weird. You know, no one's ever going to talk about a woman's period because it's so taboo and shameful and all yeah. these things. And, and when I was first starting out, it was none of these conversations were happening. Not one, not nobody, no press wanted to talk to me. Right. Nobody, no investor wanted to talk to me because they were like, it's gross. I don't want to talk about it. It's weird. We already have a solution for it. And it's just like, the solution doesn't work. It's not leaking. a good solution. They leak. Yeah. They're terrible for the environment. Right. They don't feel good. They're just, they're bad. They're, and they're all invented by men. Yeah. And so there's an opportunity to create a product for women by women. And also one that was an elevated experience and one that also supported women in the developing world who didn't have access to menstrual products. Has the pushback ever, has it ever given you pause? So you are a disruptor because recently, um, and tell me if I'm getting this wrong, but didn't, isn't, isn't it like the ads for Hello Tushy, another one of your companies, like, isn't it true that they were deemed like inappropriate yes. for like the, the, the subway system here or something like The thing that? is like the word, what is appropriate and right. inappropriate to societal preconditions and societal standards is all made up, yeah. right? We have decided to over-sexualize parts of women's bodies that are literally used to feed our children. Mm -hmm. we, are, we, are, we are creating these sort of like rules and guidelines based on centuries past around what people of the past said. And right. oh, and you're being uncouth because you're talking about periods and poop and pee. Why are you doing that? I'm like, yeah. last time I checked, you pooped. Yeah. Last time I checked, you For peed. something that we you know, all that have, we like all it's do. just the thing that happens. Right. Why is it that we can't talk? I mean, this is the thing we should be able to talk right. about. Right. It's like we've all had children. We talked when we were, when we were raising our young children. All we talked about was poop. You know what I mean? And all of a sudden, <laughs> yeah. it came a point where it became uncomfortable to talk about. Why? Because yeah. society said so. Right. And it's just like, who is society? Why are they making these rules? And I think that's why I wrote this book, Disruptor. Yes. But so then, so kind of going back to the, the businesses, 
you know, the real pushback came on building things was really all about, you know, people not wanting to talk about it. So then it became like, okay, let's, let's come up with all these fun campaigns to talk about it. Yeah. And one of them was the New York City subway campaign where we want to just use the word period in the subways. Yeah. We have underwear for women with periods. And they be- they were like, you cannot use the word period in the subway. I mean, can we just talk about, can we just talk about the fact that, um, that we now know what the, like they're establishing lines of like, right. <laughs> like what are these? What are these like sort of moral lines? I don't know what that right. even is. Like, okay. No, we can no, talk no. about all this other stuff. We can sell the line, condoms, but we're just going to like, we're, we're not good with periods. No, the, periods are the line was like, what if a nine-year-old boy sees these ads? That's insane. You know? And I was like, what's up with that? You know, it was actually interesting. I was in a meeting just the other day with a really, an older gentleman. And I was like, I was talking about my, my history of my companies. And I, talk, I was talking about periods. And he was like, stop. And I was like, what? He was like, I don't want to get into this. It could be a harassment conversation. So I don't want to talk about it. No. I was like... I don't want to talk about, you don't want to talk about periods. Wow, of the yeah. I'm just like, all right, whatever. I don't happy not, happy not to, but just so you know, you are here because of it. Without that yeah. important blood, <laughs> you would not be here moving on. Uh, it happened this, like a couple weeks, like a week ago. Well, you know? clearly, so, clearly though, I mean, I don't understand how, so this is actually good for us to hear because someone can read your story and they can assume that, well, maybe you just, knock down those boundaries and you just keep going along you're not running into people pushing back and you're saying even oh, a no. week ago yeah. i was in a discussion where this happened people are still pushing back and i'm still trudging forward absolutely but you would think that an investor or anyone any any kind of uh conversation that you have like this will look at your track record would look at the success that you've had and say okay you know what i think now i will even if i feel uncomfortable i think that this warrants a conversation yeah about it. i mean a, a lot of people do but there's some really old school really set in their ways people that eventually are going to die you know what i mean <laughs> and then the next that's gener- awesome. that's 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 true. Yeah. and when they die the next generation will get less and less you know like like tr- you know kind of triggered by it is that is that what this is about well this book is really about permission it's about yeah. permission to make a decision in every aspect of your life have agency of your own life in every aspect of it and decide for yourself does that feel good to me is it an integrity with with what i with how i feel and think yeah and yeah and if and it and also if it's from a good place obviously if you're like a bad mean cruel person you're like i'm just going to disrupt everything in a bad way and it's going to be you know yeah. hurt people that's not what i'm saying right. what i'm saying is you have agency over your life and you can decide for yourself what you think about money, how you want to feel about money, how you think about career, what you want to feel about a career, how you think and feel about the concept of acquiring so much stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, like we live in this culture where we're just being bombarded by advertisements. If you buy this, then you'll be happy. If you buy this, you'll be happy. And it just doesn't buy, ha- nothing buys happiness except for what's inside. And so it's, it's really looking at even the conversations around feminism and patriarchy yeah. that are fraught with connotation and mm-hmm. can't, oh, if you talk about feminism, then you're either a man hating person or you are, I don't know, like whatever. Or if, or if you, you know, are trying to fight the patriarchy again, there's just all these, you know, most men, like the majority of men are victims of the patriarchy too. You know, mm-hmm. there's a few small group of men who decide they want to control and dominate and the rest of the men have to get in line and, and fight for them. Oh, I feel so, that. I feel that, like, I think, yeah. <laughs> you know, and so it's, it's like, it's like all of a sudden men have to also live up to these like standards of I can't be emotional or I'm not a man. And it's just like, mm-hmm. now you're bottling it up and, and guess what? It's, it's more acceptable in the world for a man to be violent than to be emotional, you know? And so it's like, That's true. For, it's true. and so we, we have to all acknowledge where our biases as women come from too. Why do we like the bad boys? Men, women love yeah. the bad boys too, and women want to have that dangerous. Why? Oh, he stands up for there's a man and up. It's you just know? like and all it's these like, things oh, that yeah. are actually hurting like everyone. And so the, the idea is that like, can we give permission to our men to be emotional? Can we give permission to our women to 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 be strong and not feel like oh you're manly if you're trying to go after your dreams? There's just all this stuff that's all based around indoctrination from years past that should just be erased and you have to start over and decide for yourself what you want to be, how you want to you know think about all the things in your life. Well, I think people, I think when they rely on this is the structure that so many people have grown up 
and they they rely on it. This is the framework. This yes. is the way it is, and they don't question. That's I think right. that's that's one thing that you do just regularly so well is you challenge assumptions. You say, wait. Why? Why are we wiping our butts with dry <laughs> paper? Right. Can we talk about that for a second? Right, right. No, that is a very important question. I mean, we walk into our bathrooms. Yes. And it's like, well, let's, let's, before we can get to the bathrooms, we walk into our home, there's Wi-Fi. There's no, we know we've got our cell phones, smartphones, which have more access information than the president did 20 years ago. We have all these technological advances. And the, the stuff minute, on your wrist. Yeah, and, I'm the, like, oh. and yet the <laughs> minute you step into your bathroom, poof you're back into the 1800s. <laughs> the way we wipe ourselves with toilet paper it's true. has not changed it's true. since the late 1800s, 1890s yeah. is when toilet paper was brought to America. And when, you're, when we actually stop and think about what we're doing, we are taking dry paper mm -hmm. that you would never use to wipe any dirty part of your body off with just dry paper. Be like, I'm clean. Well, and you know? have you, anyone who's ever been in a situation where you've spilled something on yourself and the only thing that you can find, there's no, pay, you know, it's like you're trying to rub, there's pieces of paper coming off. It's not effective, it's, right? I mean, it's like, imagine if you, you know, went to your sink that had dirty dishes in it and just cut up a raw chicken, you know? Yeah. And then you're, you basically, you cut up a raw chicken that has a lot of salmonella on it. And then you decide instead of washing the dish, you just wipe it with dry paper and you put your dish enough. away. Yeah, and you're cool. like, people are like, I think you're crazy. Same thing yeah. if you jump in your shower, yeah. you didn't turn the water on and just use dry paper and you're like, I'm clean. It's like, yeah. people would think you're crazy, right? And so right. we've been so deeply indoctrinated to believe that this dry paper properly cleans the dirtiest part of our body when mm -hmm. all it's doing is smearing poop inside your butt. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. And it's causing infections, diseases, all these things down there that you're sitting on all day, people matter all day long. And we don't think about it. And the other thing yeah. is we're killing 15 million trees per year just for toilet paper consumption. Trees that give up, give us oxygen, yeah. trees that suck in carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, nitrogen dioxide, all these toxins in the air, keep our, our, our planet cool so we can all exist here. And then we chop them off and wipe our butts with them. And doesn't and yeah. which doesn't even clean us properly. There are thirty million combined. Yeah, so people you know, keep using more and more and more because it's like it's they're not trying effective. to. Because exactly, and there are thirty <laughs> right. million combined cases of chronic urinary tract infections, hemorrhoids, anal fissures, anal itching. Yeah. All these things could be completely eliminated by just using and the push fresh back, water. The pushback is, is is it's cultural. They don't yeah. understand it. Oh, they think poop will spray everywhere, and you're like because they don't know what it is. We're like, no, no, no. Right. Poop isn't going to spray everywhere. It's a precise stream that goes directly into the toilet. Right. And they're like, oh, well, are you using dirty toilet water to spray your butt? They're like, no, it's coming from the wall. They're literally the same water you brush your teeth with. Yeah. There's just all these beliefs. They just don't want to try something different until you're like, kind of being like, what are you doing? Like, do not see like what you're doing. Like you're, you would never wipe anything yeah. dirty with that dry paper. So once you kind of lift, like lift the veil of indoctrination off people, they're like, you're right. Yeah. Oh my God. And then they try it and they're like, I can't believe I've been doing it this way my whole yeah. life. When there's this cleaner, more precise, easier, no mess, you're saving 80% of toilet paper, which means you're saving 80% of your money. You know, and it's a $69 product. So you like within three months you're paid back. It's just, can you believe that? It's I just mean, that's so crazy. Dumb. So even if you look at it from a financial perspective, um, if you don't care anything about the earth, you know, like right. even financially, like there are so many reasons, health wise, there are reasons. And yet it's this cultural indoctrination it's, where people it, are just like, uh, I can't do it. And that's Why? what, that's what it keeps going back to is the yeah. deep indoctrination because our great grandparents and our grandparents who taught our parents and, and who taught us how to do it. It's just so deep in there that we haven't even thought of another way of doing okay. it. Association chat people where this is going to apply to you is right now be thinking, but we've always done it this way. The thing that people say over and over about whatever industry that you're in or whatever practice that you're in for marketing, um, challenging that, right? And what that looks like. And the fact that you have people who continue to push back, even though rationally, logically, it's all there, right? That's it. I mean, and, and also like when you think about, um, you know, even from, a, yeah, let's talk about the associations, right? Like what can associations keep doing to innovate, to bring in more young people, yes. to freshen up that blood, to get people more excited about joining? I think it's really about thinking about what is a new disruptive way of thinking about it. What is it? What can I do to get people from thinking about associations as this to this? Mm -hmm. And for me, I have a very simple 
thesis around how to get people to shift their behavior from oh, one to another. Oh, I love this. I was yeah. talking with my husband before I came here saying, this is, this is actually the question. This is a question I wanted you to answer. So Amazing. Perfect. Well, yes. great. Well, so for me, it's three prong, right? Okay. Three prong, it's a three prong system to really shift culture and to challenge societal norms. Okay. The first, and, and how to do it through a product, yes. either a product or a service, right? Okay. So number one, it has to be a one of one innovation, one of one, 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 of one best in class product, okay. right? So period proof underwear or, you know, or a bidet or coming up with a new way of thinking about an association, right? Like it has to be a one of one steps of creating that, like the product, right? Yeah. So what is that product? Is it a one of one product or is it a one of many product? Okay. It has to be a one of one product. So best yeah. in class product, that, that's kind of a basic obvious thing. Mm -hmm. The second thing is it has to have considered design across every touch point of the brand. Okay. If someone is going to like, you know, look at something new and different, that they've never seen before or find to be gross or weird or old school or just not relevant. Right. All of a sudden they're looking at art, looking at something yeah. beautiful and artful and creative. Mm -hmm. They can then be like, wow, that's so refreshing. That's beautiful. Oh, they're talking about period. They're talking about poop. They're talking about this old school, you know, visually, thing. visually, aesthetically, every touch point of your brand, you have to consider from an artful visual perspective. Right. And not like, I'm just going to throw something in a paper and blah. You know, I'm to put it out. My favorite two words when it comes to visual design is breathing room. Breathing, breathing room. room. Yeah. There has to be space to breathe on Making the notes. page. <laughs> right. Because if there's, if it's so much clutter with so much information in one place, you're just like, I can't think. And then you're just, you're out of there. You're like, it's too yeah. much. Yeah. What are the most, like the five words or the one word or the three words, you know, that can boom, pop your idea, you know, for people yeah. who poop. You for know, people who poop. You know, it's just like people. That's all like, of us. Yeah. It's like, it's like people click, like, well, I, would, I, would I, I, I poop. I poop. I would yeah. click on that. You know, and it's just like, you know, and so yeah. it's, it's, um, it's, and you have to really think about um, the aesthetics across every touch point of your brand, your website, what it looks like. If it's busy, is it cluttered? Do you have too many drop down? Is it just too much? Or what is it the most, three most important things you want to achieve in your website? You want to acquire email addresses. You have yeah. to have a really strong email capture kind of value proposition, a beautiful image at the top with one word that describes what you're doing. Create mm -hmm. one sentence that describes what you're doing and that's it. And the rest is an image. And then when you scroll down, you have space to breathe every time when, on the whole website. And when you have space to breathe on the website, you can make an interpretation for yourself. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is what this means to me. You have now, you, you're going to have a say in the the experience instead of it just being thrown at you i so wish that i had the crowd around me right now that i could see what all of you guys are writing in or typing in because um i can imagine that there's some processing happening right now so we've talked about one of one innovation, right yep. innovation and then we're talking about considering the design yes okay so those Across. are the two yes right? and then the third right is accessible, relatable language okay. across every touch point of your brand. And so what that means is you can't be too technical, too academic, too clinical. We all, we're, we're also like cerebral in our own ideas and what yeah. we're doing, what we're creating. And we think we know, we all, we think that everyone knows what we're talking about, Yeah. but nobody knows what we're talking about. Nobody has any clue. That's, and so, that's so true. I was just voice first. Anybody who's really into it, like when you say voice first, does anybody know what that means? Like nobody knows. And it's, and it's like my, 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 one of my biggest tests is if I tell you what I do, can you repeat it back to me? Right. And a lot of people are like, Oh, what do you do? I do blah, 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 blah. And they're like, uh huh. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. they don't remember anything. They walk away. They don't remember your name or what you do. But the minute they remember like one thing about you because they can repeat back what you say, boom, it's done. Oh, she created a product that helped people poop better. You know so, what I mean? So, like, so, so how do you answer that question? What do I, I get? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So, so, Mickey, what do you do? Oh, well, I'm um, a, a innovator. I yeah. create inventions that help elevate humanity and help the planet. And, and I know what you do. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And one, of, one yeah. example is we take dry, you know, toilet paper that we've been using for a really long time and I replace it with a modern, accessible, beautiful bidet that both elevates your life and the world. I think she's done this before. What do you guys think? Well, um, yeah. Yeah. So it's just, it's boom. It's like, and you can, okay, so what do I do? 
Right. Yeah, uh, you're an innovator and you created, um, you know, the, a modern bit like the bidet that is a new way. It's innovation in the way that people go poop. And that's it. Yeah. I look like I got it. Yeah, yeah. That's it. And so, and so we, you know, <laughs> my daughter's over here, and she's like, "Yeah, mom, good job." Yeah, good job. She was listening. Great, A plus student yeah. right here. Um, yeah. So it's really about can you repeat? Can you repeat back? Can you repeat it back? And the second thing is accessible, relatable language means, like, you know, you remove all the technical, academic, you know, you know, you know, medical, clinical sounding everything, yeah. and you replace it with how you're texting your best friend. Yes. How do you text your best friend about well, you what you poop. do? You say poop. You say poop, right? And it's like, I'm sure that people a lot of people matter, are like, you know, uh, just, let's discuss excrement, you know, or like the issue with human waste. You yeah. Know? And they're like, just it's poop, poop guys. I know. You know? And so, so the way you text your best friend yeah. is the way your copy should be. So wow. your cop, so it's like, the, it's, it's, <laughs> it's a little messy. It's not overthinking it. You're not like, hmm, I wonder what customers want me to say. Right. I wonder what they want me to say so they can then come to my event. I wonder what they, it's like, no, what do I deeply authentically want to like share? Yes. And that's, and I'm going to say it in my funny, silly, texty friend way. And that's just, that's you. That's authentic. And you feel the authenticity through the page. And I think that we, we're too concerned about what other people think and we forget about what we care about. Yeah. And when we like light attracts light, right? Mm -hmm. When you're lit, people are like, Ooh, I want that energy. I want, I want to be lit too. And if, if you're like trying to just ask, you know, see if they like me, what if I say, what will I say if they like me, then, then you'll just, you're no longer someone so that has light. And you're not, and you're not, you're not in, in your alignment. power. Yeah, yeah. You're not in alignment with your purpose, your, why you're here. Exactly. Right? And if, the minute that you are, you're like, oh my God, I'm working on this thing that does this, and this is why I love it. And like, and that is what is now, if you put that on the page, people are like, wow, I feel it. Yeah. I feel the energy. And around, I can buy in. And that. I can buy into that because right. it's authentic. Yeah. And so I think that, I mean, I think authenticity, people talk about it all the time, but people don't really embody it. Yeah. You know, embodying authenticity is truly like, what do you so deeply in the inside want to share? And just share it exactly that way. Not, not sugarcoating it in this yeah. beautiful. That's why when I say texting your best friend, it's messy. It's not, it's not perfect. It's not, the words aren't like, Sometimes you use slang and sometimes you use hashtags and sometimes you use things <laughs> that don't feel like it's a copy like thing, but that's what people want. So, okay. Yeah. So, so yes. Yes. And, um, so here's, here's an area where I think a lot of us get hung up and, uh, Rada talked a little bit about this when I interviewed her and I want to talk about it with you too, because I mean, just to put it out there, you guys are really cool. I mean, like you're, you're really like, and I can imagine really together, really smart. And I can imagine people feel intimidated. And maybe there are people out there who are saying, oh, they're so full of the, the, their, their own mission and they are confident and they're smart. And what about me? I struggle and I, I doubt myself and I, you know, so are there certain areas, you have 13, um, 13 different yeah. disruptions that you talk about in here. And I wanted to ask you, one of the questions I wanted to get to was not just what are the ones that are just naturally, you know, you're naturally good at, but what are some of the ones that maybe you struggle with? Yeah. Can you talk to sure. me about that? So okay. disruption number five in the book <laughs> is the, the comp so, so basically how the book is laid out is a common belief and then the disruption to that common belief. For example, the common belief yeah. in, in disruption number five is complaining is part of life. Mm -hmm. We all complain, we all gossip, we all chirp. In my book, I call it chirping. chirping. You know when you see like, you know, a big gigantic tree and you hear all that chirping and it's just one loud incessant chirp, you know, it's, it's, that's what's happening in your brain. You're chirping to yourself, you're chirping about others, you're chirping, you know, like actually out loud to others about others. And it's just yeah. like chirp, 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 chirp. And, and really the way to really like make a step forward in your life is to just try, is to, to manage the chirping in your brain. And how do you manage the chirping in your brain is by becoming a warrior gatekeeper of your mind. And in my book, I talk about how to become a warrior gatekeeper of your mind. And the idea is that we have so many limiting beliefs. There's so many negative thoughts. There's so many, we, we, we're like, oh, I'm not good enough. I'm this, I'm not that. I'm an I'm a imposter. I felt all of those things in my life. I still do in a lot of ways. And, and when you have those limiting beliefs, I, um, I, I practice becoming the warrior gatekeeper of my mind. I love that how I do that is 
So every time you have, you, you, you know, so, so someone's like, say they're watching me speak and they're like, oh, she's, you know, whatever she's, and you're just throwing a judgment out. You catch that judgment. Yes. And then you, you name it. You're like, oh, there's judgy Judy. You know? Judgy Judy. Yeah. There there's, ju- there's judgy Judy. Again. Again. <laughs> trying to come into my gate. And when you enter the gate of my brain, it can yeah. then spiral out of control and you're thinking about judgy Judy and all it does is make you, make you feel bad. Yeah. In the end, even if you're judging her and you're talking shit about her, you feel bad. Yeah. It's, I think about that like food. Whenever you eat like fast food, you know, like, cause you're like, I'm hungry. I'm just going to eat that. Look. And then you eat it and you're like, oh oh, 20 minutes later, you feel like crap. Right. Yeah. It's kind of like the same thing when you talk shit about others or you gossip or you're just like, you complain. And in the moment you're like, Oh, it feels good to get it out. But then you're kind of like, Ugh. I feel like I feel like shit. Yeah. You know? So yes. And so 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 the common belief is complaining is part of life. The disruption is complaining is for procrastinators. Mm. Instead of complaining about what you don't like, create what you would like. And so practice being bored, gave your mind. You catch the thought. There's Judgy Judy. Yeah. Then you name you name it. So you catch yeah. it. Then you name it. There's Judgy Judy. And then you basically you file it. And okay. you say, okay, like let me have a conversation with my therapist or my coach or my best friend about yes. this one thing on Tuesdays at 11 o'clock. Yeah. And you just, you, you put a time frame and then you're like, I, I'm not going to talk about it anymore. I'm not going to think about it anymore. I'm going to file it away and create space in my brain to do what I actually care about doing. Cause the more you, the more time you spend judging others, complaining, kind of like in that negative thought spiral, the less time you actually have to go and create the thing that you want to create in the world. Well, and the yeah. more you're just procrastinating, you're just wasting your time, the precious 21,000 days. And we're so good at wasting time. Yeah. We're so good Like time is the most non-renewable resource we have. Mm-hmm. And yet we just throw it away. Money, we're like, oh, I don't want to spend it. I know. And yet we just waste our time complaining, judging, talking shit. Like, or scrolling. You know, or scrolling, like whatever. whatever. It and it's yes. just like, yeah. you know, and I, and I really, I really think that um, there is a way to, to, to really become aware of every thought that enters your brain. Because sometimes like I'm in the shower and I kind of like, you know, something bad happened and I can let it get in my brain. And sometimes I do. And I'm like, whoa, it got into my gate, got past my gate. Yeah. So when it gets past your gate, because we're all human beings where we can't just catch every thought all the time. Yeah. And you don't get mad at yourself. You're like, oh, that, you know, Judge G. Judy came into my body. <laughs> and then, when then, but then eventually, yeah, you, I, you, I you, will, you will catch Judge G. Judy eventually. And then you'll be like, oh, I caught her. And then you practice pattern interruption. So if you get, if, if Judge G. Judy gets past yeah. your while you're, if you get good enough, yeah. it doesn't get past a warrior gate, you keep it, you start to like, choo, 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 you know, and then you can just keep focusing on what you want to love doing the people you love and the positive things in your life. It's important to process the negative too, not to be like, I'm not thinking about the negative stuff. You get, you purge out the stuff that's gone through in your life, but you put a time limit on it. Mm-hmm. You don't have to do it for like, you know, you say, okay, for the next two weeks, I'm going to mourn the loss. I lost my job or I lost my partner. I lost my this or I lost that. You give yourself a timeline, a short timeline. You can, you know, purge about it. But you don't want to be that person that everywhere you go, people are like, oh, there she is again. I'm going to complain or something. Oh, there's a talk shitter again. Oh, there's a right. gossip again. Yeah. You just don't want to be that person. And yeah. but you, so if you're the person who's, who's genuinely always or usually in a good mood or positive and you go through something hard, we'll, there, we'll be there for you. Our friends will show for each other. It's not like we're like, oh, now she's negative and now I don't want to be there for her. No, but you for yourself put a timeline on it. You're like, I'm going to mourn for the next two weeks or for the next five days or the next, whatever you give yourself. Yeah. But then when you're done, you're done. Done. And then you done. stop talking about it anymore. Yeah. And so, so then, so, so then you, you become a warrior gate for your mind. If it gets past your warrior gate, where you're kind of still judging or still talking, whatever, you then, you then learn to practice pattern interruptions. The second stop. Yes. Practice pattern interruption is when you had your baby, right? Mm-hmm. When you had your baby and she was crying, yes. you would, you would, we would switch her. You would switch her. You would move her. You would stand up. Mm-hmm. You'd take, put, you'd bring her in the shower. You'd give her, take her bath. You would do different things to make her stop crying yeah we're adult we're humans we're all we're all we're just big babies you know yeah. the end, right? so <laughs> some when, of us more than others yeah but, uh, <laughs> and so when we and so when we want to feel when we feel we, when we let judgy judy come into our bodies and we're now sp- thought spiraling into our bodies and we're talking shit in ourselves we then have to like literally like stand up yeah you know are you literally like move your body or you literally take a walk around the block you actually have to do something physical mm-hmm. to get yourself out of that state. Yes. And then you're like, I'm, I'm walking through these doorways. You know, Rana's book, The Long Shocks, about that. Yeah. You walk through the door, we have an oh, opportunity. Oh, yeah, yeah. And the recharging. You can, you can reset, yeah, reset what you're thinking. I mean, I do that. I'm like, I'm walking, yeah. I walk through this door. That, 
done. I'm still you working know? on trying to, so I have a book club with association chat and we're going through the belong book that was for April and, um, the and so, should be there. <laughs> so we're going to go through, it'll be on the list. And so, um, and so it's interesting because we're going through the exercises and we have like the three columns exercise, which is like, who is it that you're wanting to bring into your life mm -hmm. and be around their energies and, you know, um, what is it that you and don't vampires, want? Yeah. And then, and then also what is it in yourself that you need to look at in order to, to bring about that kind of life and those kinds of people that you're, you're interested in. And, totally. so, and we're human beings, human beings, human beings relate to each other through talking about other people. Yeah, yeah. But there comes a point where you're talking about other people and you're delaying your own progress, in your own life. Yes. And so you're talking about something negative in your life. You're talking and about, you're complaining yeah. and you just, you just get hung up on it and you talk really about it. And everyone's like, eventually after a while, you're like, okay, like, you know, there are some people in our lives that, you know, you know, they've been talking about the same thing for the last like three years. They're like, dude, okay, don't I can't support you it. anymore yeah. because every time I see you, you drain me of the energy and, and you don't, you, you keep talking and you've been talking about the same thing for three years. Yes. I can't, we cannot, I'm sorry. You know, you have to go and do it for yourself and then we can be friends again. I'm, I'm here for you, but I need to see you take action in your life. Yeah. Because otherwise, like, I, I can't do this. So, so you have to, you have to actually draw a line in the sand as well. So um so here's a question for you yes um <clears throat> so purpose in life yeah i asked you what do you do but purpose in life yeah what do you feel your purpose in life is yeah my purpose is to elevate humanity mm -hmm. and also support mother earth at the same time yeah yeah that is my purpose i love it and see that clarity helps you it it resolves so many questions yeah you know you probably don't waste much time Right. Answering questions because it's pretty clear. Does it serve, you know, am I serving my role? Am I serving my mission and going this way or that way? You know, that's right. And, um, and I think that, you know, we're, we're human. So mm -hmm. we, we, it's not like we're, we falter. Like, you know, sometimes if I'm extremely thirsty and my water bottle, like yesterday, I didn't drink water all day and I had a headache because I, I'm, I'm, I'm really trying to go no plastic water bottles. Yeah. And so I, so I didn't buy a plastic water bottle yesterday at all. But you were out, you didn't have I had, you know, I had my water oh, bottle, but okay. I finished it. We were out in the beating sun all day. Yeah. And I, and I refused to go. So it's at like my, so I'm also trying to figure out like what I can do where there's a balance, you yeah. know, where, you know, so, 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 but, but at the same time, it's like, I really want to, my, my, my mission now is to really catch myself like being aware of every piece of waste I create in the world. Yes. It's like, wow, like every time I have to get a, you know, to go bag and I forgot my bag, I feel bad. Yes. And I want to feel yeah. bad because we all have to do that. You know, mm -hmm. like 46% of all trees are gone on earth. You mm -hmm. know, our children will be left with, with, with a really bad, you know, planet. It's not, and, and, and the planet earth will just kill us all. And then they'll take, they might take 20,000 years to like get back to zero. Yeah. But you know, we're, there's going to be some really hard times for, for the next generations if we don't really focus on, on really thinking about all the waste we create in the world. And well, so speaking of next generation, yes. I actually want to make sure that we bring on my daughter who is here and is, I, I asked her to listen and to come up with a question um, and she can think about them ahead of time. But I want to see if Margo, would you like to come on and ask a question? Mm -hmm. And don't forget you had your little pad of paper over there that you wanted to use. Yeah, but you can ask. I mean, you don't have to use it, but come on up. So um, when you were my age, oh, that's okay. <laughs> when you were my age, what would you tell yourself at 11 years old? Um, I would tell myself that every moment is precious and that um, to really to really find a passion for yourself. Um, for me, my passion was soccer. And so I really I played it like seven days a week outside three hours a day, just playing, playing, playing. So I think it's really about finding your passion and just fanning the flames of it and really doing everything you can to get better at that passion. When you're 11 years old, you know, at 11, you don't have to think about rent. You don't think have to think about a mortgage. <laughs> like, <laughs> think about food, <laughs> putting food on the table, like mil billions of people do every day your age who don't have food on the right. table or, or water to drink. 
you know, you have such a luxury, you've been born to this beautiful family in this beautiful country that gives you opportunity. What will you do with that privilege? You are a very privileged young lady. And so what, what problems in the world could you solve having the privilege that you do? You can solve a lot of problems. So I would think about what problem in the world that you would solve. For me, had I been know what I know now at 11, I would have started then to really focus on helping people who don't have what I do. Let me think. Yeah. Get some. <laughs> Are there, is there anything you care about um, in the world right now that you want to help solve? Um, well, I sort of want to solve um, how a lot of people, this has been addressed a lot lately, but like, <laughs> <laughs> but how um, usually people don't listen to kids as much as they listen to adults. Mm -hmm. And I think that they have the same voice. So. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's great. So what yeah. do you want to say? Um, we're all humans. Yeah. So we all should have the same right to have like a say in everything. Love that. I love that. That's great. That's so, not bad. Yeah. So it's like, for example, for example, a say in what? <laughs> like the planet or like what we're doing to the planet? Um, yeah, like... <laughs> Like all the areas, basically, like just to say, areas. yeah. Yeah, like yeah. in general. I love that. No, I think that's yeah. really, really powerful. It's true. You're, you're a being as much as she's a being, as much mm -hmm. as I'm a being. Why is it that we have to say you don't? That's a really, really great thought. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for, thank you. Yeah. She, she was kind of like hesitant Amazing. to do this. I threw her into it because I'm like, well, I that's actually here, important. you know? Yeah, like, and yeah, important. I'm like, you were all here. I want to hear what she has to say. And, you know, this is a yeah. great opportunity to meet to meet you and, yeah. and to be able to ask a question. So awesome. I appreciate it. Thank you for taking the time with me and to talk with all of us. And I see blinking uh, questions and all kinds of things. Awesome. Awesome. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I will check all of the questions that if you had any questions or comments, I'll check all of those uh, in a little bit and I'll try to make sure that I get if there's anything that's like dire that you yeah, can yeah, answer, yeah. Um, get you those can, questions. You can also you. follow me on Instagram at Mickey Agrawal, M-I-K-I-A-G-R-A-W-A-L. And I answer, I, I'm, I'm on messages there all the time. So Yeah, yeah. And it's pretty spectacular. This has been amazing. Um, thank you yeah. so much. Yes, join the book club <laughs> and right. then we will be covering this book. Yeah. Yes. And uh, in a little bit, I'm going to be interviewing Andrew Horn. He's and we're the best. <laughs> no, if you really want yeah. to talk about how to fight your inner critic and your inner voice and the and your lack of confidence or people who, have, who don't have that confidence, yeah. he has the perfect framework on how to tap into your internal motivation oh, yeah. versus like external uh, I'm forces. definitely asking him yeah. about that yeah. for sure. And community. Yeah. And I've got my whole list yes. of questions ready. So awesome. well, thank thanks you. For watching. Thanks everyone. And we will see you soon. Yes. yes. All right. Bye. Bye. <laughs> this is not the fanciest end. I realize.